Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. This is Father Dan Cassis. It is Good Friday, early evening here in Arizona. And uh, we're going to do our final day of the Novena to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I do want to say a few words prior to that, though. If you were fortunate enough to hear the account of the Passion in the Gospel of St. John at the Passion service uh, that we hold on Good Friday afternoons, uh, there's a recording of that. Of course, you can see that on this YouTube channel, our, our Passion service. But the account of the Passion read from St. John's Gospel is strikingly different than the accounts of the Passion and the death of the Lord that we find in the Synoptic Gospels, that is in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We read the Passion account from the Gospel of Matthew last Sunday on, on Palm Sunday of the Passion. But today, as always, on every Good Friday, we read the account from the Gospel of St. John. And there's one characteristic that I'd like you to reflect on. You might want to go and read this yourself and do a little meditation. Um, is that throughout the account of the Passion in the Gospel of St. John, John presents Jesus as being in control of everything that happens. From when the soldiers come to arrest him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he tells them, you know, if you're looking for me, you know, take me, let everybody else go. I'm right here. Here I am. And even when St. Peter draws his sword and cuts off the servant Malchus's ear, and Jesus, of course, tells him to put a scabbard away and he heals Malchus. He's in complete control. Even when he's brought before Caiaphas, the high priest, before being sent to Pilate. He's in complete control, even telling them, you know, why are you interrogating me? Ask the people that I've spoken to. I've spoken openly in the temple districts for the last few years. Ask them what I've said. And if I said anything wrong, tell me. Before Pilate, of course, um, he's in complete control. Even when he takes up his cross and he walks the way of the cross to Golgotha. John doesn't say anything about Simon of Cyrene, the one who helped him carry the cross. John says that Jesus himself carried the cross. And even when he hung upon the cross, he was in complete control. And as it says elsewhere in the scriptures, the Lord says, you know, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down in obedience to the Father's will. And so at the conclusion, at his death, he himself proclaims, it is finished. And I, I want you to take note of this because we're in the middle of this pandemic, this illness that's spread around the world. And of course, we continue to pray for all of those who are dealing with the sick and keeping us safe and trying to lead the communities here and around the world to, as it were, stay the spread of this virus and to try to bring things back to some kind of normalcy. And we pray for all of them. We will in the, in the Novena prayer. But just as throughout his passion and his death, the incarnate God who died upon the cross was in complete control despite the whole weight of evil and suffering and death coming upon him. In the midst of the world in which we live, that is a world in which there are many good and wonderful things, loving people, beauty and creation, but there is suffering and there is death. We see that very clearly in the midst of this pandemic. Hopefully, 
people that have forgotten about God will wake up to God and wake up to trying to follow after him. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God is in control. In good times and in bad. And ultimately, all things will be brought to a good end. So on this Good Friday celebration in the midst of the Triduum, the great day of the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord. Just as the Lord laid his life down and it seemed as though evil had conquered, we know that he's going to rise from the dead destroying death forever and will have brought good forth from that which is the most evil deed that has happened in the history of creation, deicide, the death of the incarnate Lord upon the cross. God will bring forth good. And the question that we ought to ask ourselves today, reflecting on this, and the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Is the Lord, Almighty God, in charge of my life? Is he in control? Or am I in control? Do I just have a measured relationship with the divine, with Almighty God? with our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit? Or do I truly make an attempt to turn all of my life and my will over to Almighty God? Because whether you're aware of it or not, or I'm aware of it or not, God is in control and God's will will be done. Good thing to think, good, very good thing to think about at this time, during this period of, of quiet, of darkness, when the Lord lay in the tomb throughout Holy Saturday. And if you haven't made an act of will to turn your life and your will over to Almighty God, good time to do it, very good time to do it. In fact, every day is a good time to do that because whether we're aware of it consciously or not, God is in control and may his will always be done. Let's now do our novena prayer. And this is the ninth day of our novena. A novena is nine days of prayer. And this is a particular novena to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Immaculate Virgin, by the holy will of your Son, our, my Lord Jesus Christ, you are my mother in heaven. Your immaculate heart is full of love, mercy, and compassion for sinners like me. I ask that you intercede for me today for relieving us of this pandemic, this illness that spread about our communities, for help and care for all of the healthcare workers and all of the first responders all members of the military and everyone in law enforcement, everyone who's trying to help our communities. And also I, I place in your care our leaders, President Trump, Governor Ducey, our mayor here in Sholo, all of the leadership around the world in, in every state and every community, and all the religious leaders who are trying to lead their communities as well throughout this that you watch over them, keep them healthy, and direct their decisions to make the best decisions for our communities. I ask also that you continue to heal my brother Tim and his wife, Becky, also Al and Michael, and my cousin Jim, and all of those who are ill, either with this coronavirus or with other major illnesses. I trust in your intercession before the throne of God for my needs. Please pray also that if my requests are not in accordance with the will of God, that I may be like you conform to his will and not my own. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. No an act of consecration. O most holy Virgin Mary, tender mother of men, to fulfill the desires of the sacred heart of Jesus and the request of the vicar of your son on earth, we consecrate ourselves and our families to your sorrowful and immaculate heart. O queen of the most holy rosary, we recommend to you all the people of our country and all the world. Please accept our consecration, dearest mother, and use us as you wish to accomplish your designs in the world. O sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, queen of the most holy rosary, and queen of the world, rule over us, together with the sacred heart of Jesus Christ, our King. Save us from the spreading flood of modern paganism. Kindle in our hearts and homes the love of purity, the practice of a virtuous life, an ardent zeal for souls, and a desire to pray the rosary more faithfully. We come with confidence to you, O throne of grace, and mother of fair love, Inflame us with the same divine fire which has inflamed your own sorrowful and immaculate heart. Make our hearts and homes your shrine, and through us make the heart of Jesus together with your rule triumph in every heart and home. Amen. I'm going to add uh, an extra Our Father today. It's the final day of the Novena. And in a particular way, I want to also pray for others who have asked me to pray for them. In a particular way, my dear friend Paul, um, that whatever is bothering his heart at this time, that the Blessed Mother and uh, our Lord Jesus Christ will touch him and heal him so he may continue to witness to the goodness and to the hope and to what has come to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And now a prayer to blessed Sebastian and blessed Corona, patrons and patroness of uh, those afflicted by pandemics and, and epidemics and plagues. O blessed Sebastian and blessed Corona, intercede for us with the Lord Jesus Christ, that from plague or from pandemic disease we may be delivered by thy merits and prayers. Pray for us, Saints Sebastian and Corona, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. I entrust us all to the care and the love of Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and to our patroness, Saint Rita. May the peace of Christ be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Spend some time with the Lord now between now and Easter. Associate yourself in this quietude when the earth slept and the Lord was entombed. Amen.